The president went to Cuba to build his legacy. It did not go well. He arrived in Havana Sunday. He was snubbed. The Castro brothers were not there to greet him, and it went downhill from there. As our president shook hands with the communist dictator, the women in white emerged from Palm Sunday church services and were promptly roughed up and hauled off to prison. All they wanted was the release of political prisoners, their loved ones. The world looked on. Then came news of the Brussels terror attack, mass killing in the center of Europe. The president virtually ignored it. He spent just 51 seconds on it. It was a passionless 51 seconds. Then it was a big smile, and off to the baseball game, and the wave with Raul. Terror had interrupted his Cuba legacy, so he chose to ignore it. In Argentina, he was forced to address the Brussels attack, but again, it was a passionless, unconvincing response. Fighting ISIS is his top priority, he said. Really? But what has he actually done? We are pursuing many strategies, he said. And then he tangoed the night away. If anything, this foreign trip turned out to be a legacy destroyer. Cuba remains a communist dictatorship, which actually gained stature from the presidential visit. What kind of legacy is that? In fact, the president's real legacy was exposed, and that is the legacy of global terror. He has some responsibility here. His failed policies in Syria and Iraq led directly to the rise of ISIS and Europe's Muslim migrant crisis. But he won't admit it, because that would tarnish his image as the great peacemaker. This week, we have been confronted with the jarring images of bloodshed and slaughter in Europe, side by side with free speech demonstrators dragged off to prison and a president doing the tango. It has not been a good week for legacy building.